Virgo Rising's January 2023 is a very intense new beginning with a close relationship, romantic most likely, and also a new beginning at your career. If you're excited to dive into what you can expect for your rising sign this January 2023, weird to say, make sure that you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you are always up to date with what the stars have in store for you. If you're new here, hi, I'm Marin. I am a tropical Western astrologer, and I'm using whole sign houses to do these videos. Several of the things mentioned will have entire videos dedicated to them, so feel free to check on my channel for any of the new full moon videos or the major transits happening. So this whole month, Jupiter is back in Aries. Jupiter was in Aries over the summer. Jupiter is a planet of growth and expansion, and it was in your eighth house of finances over the summer. So with Jupiter now back in Aries to start the year and stay there over the first five months, it definitely shows growth in resuming a financial journey. It could be making more money through trading, investing, or it could be that you're just putting more attention into learning about shared finances and investing in your life. Now to kick off January specifically on the first, Venus joins Pluto in your Capricorn fifth house. Venus is value and harmony. With it in your fifth house of dating and romance, conjunct Pluto, planet of intensity, looks like you could be starting off the month with something pretty, I was going to say steamy, but that is cringe. Something pretty intense in your romantic relationships. It looks very intense romantically. If you're not in a romantic relationship or just your life is not about that right now, it could be intense creative breakthroughs that are a little bit scary or a little bit jarring, but are really great for your creative project. Now on the third, Venus enters your Aquarius sixth house. The sixth house is coworkers or day-to-day -day workplace. It can also be physical health. So with Venus entering there, it shows more harmony and more ease either in the workplace or around things that you're doing for your health. On the 6th, there's a full moon in your Cancer 11th house. Full moons are endings or times of culmination. With it in your 11th house of networking or socializing, looks like a very social, very uplifted, like party energy for the 6th, that full moon there. Could also be that you're ending a contract or you're ending ties with a certain organization. On the 7th, there's a Sun Mercury Kazemi conjunction in your Capricorn 5th house. Sun Mercury together shows realization or shows information coming to light. With it in your fifth house of dating or creativity, one of those things could become much clearer by the end of the first week. On the ninth, Venus in your sixth house will try Mars in your tenth house. This shows that you've been working really hard at your career and it's leading to better dynamics with coworkers or your physical health. On the twelfth, we have really good news, which is that Mars retrograde is over and Mars is now direct in your Gemini tenth house of career. Over the past few months with Mars retrograde there, you've been rethinking or having to redo something in your career. But now with Mars Direct, you're ready to actually put your foot down, deal with the difficult things, and make decisions professionally. From the 14th to the 15th, Venus in your 6th house will square Uranus in your ninth house. This shows that even as things are going very well for you health-wise or work-wise, there's some disruptions to travel plans or education plans that are kind of making that a little interesting or difficult. On the 18th, Mercury retrograde is over and Mercury is now direct in your Capricorn fifth house. So as someone ruled by Virgo, Mercury retrogrades can be difficult or just frustrating. And with Mercury direct in your fifth house of dating and creativity, looks like easier communication, logistics, and planning around those things in your life. On the 18th to the 19th, the Sun will conjoin Pluto in your Capricorn fifth house. Sun Pluto can be paranoid or feel like we're being manipulated or in some weird power dynamics. With that in your fifth house of dating or creativity, creativity could either feel like the person you're dating is being a little suspicious or you're being played. You could be paranoid. Could also be that there's some intensity around a creative project where there's some like evil energy going on and you're like, I don't know about this. Then on the 20th, the sun enters your Aquarius sixth house. And on the 21st, there's a new moon in your Aquarius sixth house. So there's a lot more focus on the last week, particularly around your workplace dynamics with people like employees or coworkers or your physical health. There's a new beginning around that happening in a positive way. And on the 22nd to the 23rd, Venus in your sixth house will conjoin Saturn. Venus is value, Saturn is seriousness or commitment. So it looks like the commitment to an opportunity that's positive, but also a little bit serious or a little bit mature around work or around your health and what you're doing to support that. On the 22nd, Uranus is direct in your ninth house of foreign travel or higher education. So Uranus retrograde shows rethinking the sudden change that we're enacting, 
Uranus direct shows you're ready to, to really go for it and be a little bit chaotic or disruptive around travel or education plans in your life. Finally, on the 27th, we end the month with a really beautiful transit for you, which is Venus entering your Pisces seventh house. Venus is exalted in Pisces, which means that it is very positive. It's very uplifting. It can do a lot of good when it's in that sign. And with it in your seventh house of committed relationships, it looks lovely for the bond that you've been forming to end the month. Have any thoughts coming up for you and your rising sign for this month, feel free to drop them in the comments down below. I would love to hear how you're feeling about this month. The tarot card that we have here for Virgo Risings for January is the Two of Pentacles reversed. So the Two of Pentacles usually shows being provided for or just like literally improving your financial situation. With the reverse, it shows that you are stuck and you're not doing exactly what will move you forward in a material sense. So your relationship could be going well, but looks like you were starting something new at work because maybe you're like, I'm stuck. I need to completely redo this. With this, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe. I see that the majority of you actually are not subscribed yet, so it'd be cool to have you join the, the marinara sauce family. I know it's fucking cringe, but like that's the word that came to mind and it's just what has landed, spread on the pizza. Um, anyway, if you enjoyed this, do comment down below as well. Love to hear all of your thoughts and your feelings about the month ahead. Otherwise, I will see you in the next one.